Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Department of Public Health and Social Services Division of Children's Welfare Bureau of Child Services, Committee to Re-elect Lou and Josh, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety. What is in half a day, Guam and the Marianas, Guaisi Pali Siva. And I'm Alana Chargolov. Thanks for watching. Today is Thursday, June 30th. Now for your morning headlines presented to you by the Pacific Daily News. As lawmakers continue to push to ease gas prices, Mobile Oil Guam's President Jimmy Howe said that capping the profit margin of gas companies could have negative results. Howe responded to Senator Clint Rogel's Bill 320 and its fundamental misconceptions about the fuel market. He said that capping profits could negatively impact the ability to operate in Guam and affect the community's access to safe and reliable fuel supply. And the second day of the Guam Department of Education's Health and Safety Conference addressed more on school threats. School administrators voiced issues with the Guam Police Department's response to school threats. GPD Sergeant Paul Tapao explained that unless a crime has been committed, the department's response is going to be the highest. The attorney representing Asuru Hanu for the alleged sexual assault of a woman has filed a motion for a mistrial. On the third day of Frank Colts and Nicholas's trial, attorney Joaquin J. Ariola Jr. asked the court for a mistrial, citing prosecutorial misconduct. The motion comes after court judge Arthur Barcenas ordered several witnesses to be excluded from testifying in the trial due to witnesses' statements containing hearsay. Five men expected to plead to charges connected to the incident at Paseo de Susana parking lot will have to return to court at a later time. Evan Pangolin and Kyle Tapusniak, Carrie Lee Willie, Marcin Kinton and Narson Martian were scheduled to appear in Superior Court of Guam yesterday, but Magistrate Judge Jonathan Kwan couldn't take any of the pleas due to them being charged separately instead of together as co-defendants. Some of the confusion was caused by the AG's office, Kwan said. And a man was charged in connection with stealing items from a parked van. Officers viewed surveillance footage of the Akanta Mall and found LaSalle L. fainted. As the man opening a car's front doors fainted and two others were caught by a different person the next day after he was found in his company van stealing cigarettes. Finally, the Guam Plaza Resort and Spa held their second job fair yesterday. The hotel is looking to fill positions for the hotel, partner restaurants, and stores. Applications are being accepted until the jobs are filled. For more of these stories, you can log on to GuamPDN.com or pick up the latest issue of the Pacific Daily News. Three bills authored by Senator Mary Torres were recently signed into law by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero to strengthen protections against survivors of domestic abuse and sexual assault. A statement from the office of Senator Torres highlighted Guam as having the highest number of sexual assaults per capita with 64.2 reported rapes per 100,000 people, citing data from the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Uniform Crime Reporting Program. Here's more. According to a release from Senator Torres's office, the measures come as the legislature's latest efforts to combat a staggering number of sexual assault cases in Guam, also stating that should the worst happen, these measures ensure survivors have a clear path to seek justice and hold their abusers accountable. The bipartisan package of bills received unanimous approval from the legislature in early June. So I believe these three bills are those... Um, policy changes that are going to change the whole conversation about what is consent, um, you as a victim, whether you decide to prosecute or not, what are your rights? What are your rights as a victim? What are you entitled to in terms of care, counseling, protection? Um, those are the things that are not obvious to anybody. So what we try to do in this office is, is put everything in one chapter, give them a, a victim's bill of rights.
Bill 242-36, now Public Law 36-100, enables victims to separate from phone plans shared with abusers without fees or penalty if they submit a police report, an order of protection, or a declaration made under penalty of perjury from a licensed health care provider, social worker, employee of the court, or victim advocate. Prior to the enactment of Torres' second bill in the set, victims who voluntarily consumed an intoxicating substance prior to being assaulted or raped were not considered mentally incapacitated. Torres said the set of legislation came about after learning of the Minnesota Supreme Court's overturning of a conviction last year surrounding a victim's consent to sexual relations and what constituted that. She said in Guam, if one on their own consumed a substance, that made them impaired or unable to relay consent, it didn't allow their abuser to be convicted. Oftentimes, these cases that involve sexual assault involve intoxicating substances, alcohol mostly. Um, so that was, that was pretty much that case triggered the thought of, let's look at what's happening in Guam. But mostly these, these bills are about how do we change the whole paradigm, the whole conversation about what is what is right, what is not right, who is in control, and giving more control and power to women, um, or even, even boys who are sexually assaulted. Bill number 243-36, now Public Law 36-101, closes what Torres called a consent loophole by expanding the definition of mental incapacitation in the criminal sexual conduct statute to include any person under the influence of a substance that renders them incapable of consenting. The law also defines consent for the first time in Guam law as words or overt actions indicating a freely given present agreement. Lastly, Bill Number 244-36, now Public Law 36-102, adopts a standard Bill of Rights for Guam sexual assault victims, including the right to advocacy and informative rape kit procedures and notification, and the retention of all rights regardless of whether assault is reported to law enforcement. It's getting to the root of it. Um, but mostly for me, you know, we, we always talk about punishment, but for me it's how do you prevent, how do you cure, and how do you empower people so that they don't fall prey? You know, that's, that's really what we need more of on this island. Torres said the bills give victims dignity, respect, and privacy, and provide victims something that was not provided to them in law before. She credited former prosecutor Christine Tenorio for sharing what prevented her from prosecuting and other agencies that helped her understand the law to include the Bureau of Women's Affairs, the Attorney General's Office, the Public Defender Service Corporation, and health care providers. But mostly it, it provides knowledge that I think now is going to help change the culture in how we think about these things. Bodily autonomy, your rights to privacy, you know, and, and what, what, uh, what you're entitled to in terms of whether you say yes expressly or don't say yes expressly. That's now the divide. Torres stated in the release there is more work needed to combat sexual assault and family violence. Days after the legislature's unanimous approval of this package, Torres announced the introduction of another three measures that, if enacted, will make victims of abuse eligible for new civil protection orders relative to non-consensual contact, involvement of firearms, stalking, and being cut off from basic needs. They have been referred to the Committee on Justice. And that's what I'm hoping these bills and, and subsequent bills that I've done do, just change the culture. You know, we're, we're thinking this differently now, we're treating people differently now. Um, the whole blame game is going to be clearly defined about where it begins and where it ends, where it's not permitted. For Buenos, I'm Alana Chargloff. Governor Leon Guerrero stated in a release that over time as society grows to further understand the nature of domestic violence and criminal sexual conduct and the dynamics between aggressors and victims involved in these crimes, it is imperative that the body of governing law likewise evolves. And coming up on Buenos are your CNMI morning headlines presented by the Marianas Variety. This is Buenos in the Morning.
The rising cost of living is affecting all of us on Guam. Our administration has expanded a program. We want to pay for your child's daycare up to $675 a month per child. This means more money in your pocket to pay for other expenses like the cost of gas and groceries. The Leon Guerrero Tenori administration is investing in Guam's future and that starts by supporting our working families. We are all in this together, Guam. This ad is paid for by government funds at the Office of the Governor and the Department of Public Health and Social Services. Your CNMI headlines are now presented by the Marianas Variety. The Saipan and Northern Islands Legislative Delegation on Wednesday passed the final version of House Bill 22-28 to amend the controversial local law that doubled the electronic gaming license fee. The bill would, would impose an annual local license fee on all poker amusement machines located within e-gaming facilities or hotels, electronic gaming machines, or electronic table games as defined in Section 3154A, and also on such machines and games situated in a hotel pursuant to Section 3156B within the 3rd Senatorial District, equal to $2,000 per machine. Recently, MP Holdings General Manager Bart Jackson expressed support for House Bill 22-28, saying it was a well-thought-out measure. Professor Rose Quizon Villazor of the Rutgers Law School delivered a lecture titled Critical Race Theory, Pacific Islands and Cultural Rights. On June 28th in the Guma Justicia Assembly Hall, she discussed the history and origins of critical race theory or CRT and about how it applies to laws such as the CNMI's Article 12, which restricts ownership of land to indigenous people. Professor Quizon Villazor said for non-indigenous people who cannot own property, it feels as if it's race discrimination. You cannot own land if you are not of Northern Marianas descent. On the other hand, NMD individuals will argue that this is supposed to protect them because of land scarcity. Importantly, the Commonwealth might not be able to become a Commonwealth because it is part of the negotiations with the U.S. to protect indigenous land rights. And from that argument, one can see it's a political one. She added Quizon Villazor's presentation is, well, she added that, and Quizon Villazor's presentation is part of the Northern Marianas Judiciary Historical Society's Law in the Community Lecture Series. She and Associate Professor Ian Hihan of Georgetown Law School are the presenters. Three other lectures have been scheduled and are free. For more information, you can go to the CNMI Judiciary's Facebook page. Senate President Jude Hofschneider, in his capacity as acting governor, on Wednesday last week signed House Local Bill 22-22 into law, allowing auto rental offices in village commercial zones in Saipan. The local measure was passed by the Saipan and Northern Islands Legislative Delegation on June 3rd, and it amends Section 404 of the Saipan Zoning Law of 2013 to allow auto rental offices with storage, staging, and service on site for conditions use in Saipan zoning districts categorized as village commercial. The new law states that certain business establishments have entered into a 40-year land lease agreement with the Department of Public Lands to open car rental businesses. And for these stories and more, you can pick up a copy of the Marianas Variety. And when we come back, we'll Zoom with the Guam Department of Labor Special Projects Co Coordinator, Janela Carrera, and talk about the upcoming island-wide job fair taking place tomorrow at the Riga Royal Laguna Guam Resort, formerly known as Sheraton Hotel. This is Buenos in the Morning. If you are a senior citizen or an individual with a disability who needs assistance in getting the COVID-19 vaccine, call 311 and press 2. 
A representative will be happy to assist you in scheduling a vaccination appointment, arranging transportation if needed, or arranging homebound vaccination service. Just call 311 and press 2. This public service announcement is made possible through the Guam Tri Agency on Developmental Disabilities, UOG Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities Education, Research and Service, Guam Legal Services Corporation, Disability Law Center, and Guam Developmental Disabilities Council through the Administration for Community Living. The rising cost of living is affecting all of us on Guam. Our administration has expanded a program. We want to pay for your child's daycare up to $675 a month per child. This means more money in your pocket to pay for other expenses like the cost of gas and groceries. The Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration is investing in Guam's future and that starts by supporting our working families. We are all in this together, Guam. This ad is paid for by government funds at the Office of the Governor and the Department of Public Health and Social Services. Buenas in half a day. My name is Polly Suba, and with us on Buenas Talk, Janela Carrera. Thank you so much for joining us here on PBS. Oh, half a day, Polly, and thank you for having me. Such yeah, I, I mean, you're a familiar face with PBS. You've been a, such a great partner uh, throughout the pandemic over at Public Health, and then you helped us out with the COVID recovery report. And now you're over at GDO Well. I, I wanted to touch on the readiness workshops that you, I, I'm not sure if you're continuing that or if they just finished up. So we actually had our last readiness workshop for the month on mm. Tuesday. Mm. Um, it was a packed house. We had a lot of interest from it. Um, so that was the last one we did for the month. Um, but we're going to reassess it and see if uh, we continue to have uh, interest from the community. We may just have more. Um, so as you know, we, we talked about this, you know, the job readiness workshop was to offer some training to the community, uh, re uh, resume writing, and then also uh, job um, interview skills training. So this was in partnership with the Society for Human Resource Management, SHRM, and this was the best of the best. They taught you how to build a resume and then also uh, gave you interview skills training. So, um, and then this was also leading up to our job fair, our governor's island-wide job fair. So if you attended one of these classes, then you should be all prepared to know how to put together a quality resume and then be prepared for that job interview. Um, so if you have your resume put together and you're looking for a job, you should be able to bring that resume to that job fair. And then, you know, you may even be hired on the spot. I mean, because this all does work out uh, perfectly, 30,000 people, uh, from what I understand, was the number approximately uh, of people under the unemployed uh, assistance the PUA assistance, right? And I've heard Director Dave De La Sola mention that a good amount of those people are already back to work. But what I have been seeing is a lot of um, uh, high, um, job hiring um, ads on people's walls, on businesses' walls, that they're seeking employ employees to come back or to start with them. And so an island-wide job fair in this aspect uh, is is appropriate. And, and so this one's happening Friday, right, over at the former Sheraton Hotel? Yes. Yeah, so it's it's it's, it's now called the Riga Royal Laguna okay. Resort. Uh, so, yeah, it's happening on Friday, uh, July 1st, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So so what's happening, what we're seeing now is, you know, we, of course, uh, under Director Dave Delasola's leadership, right, we, as you mentioned, we had the PUA program. We had a lot of people that were unemployed because of the pandemic. Um, and, and we had the largest, um, you know, unemployment. Well, we had the only unemployment system right here in Guam. And so, you know, PUA um, has has closed, right? Uh, and so now we have this, um, we have, uh, a, a lot of people are going back to work, uh, but it's not enough. And we have uh, all these employers who are hungry to hire. They're opening up, they're reopening their businesses, especially in the hotel industry, the restaurant industry, uh, now that we have tourism that's um, reopening, the tourism industry, um, a, a lot of restaurants are actually, and not just restaurants, but a lot of other companies are expanding their businesses. Uh, there's entrepreneurs that are looking at other types of services that they want to expand. And so they're eager to hire. And so you're seeing job fairs uh, happening, you know, almost on a weekly basis. These are, these are kind of more um, 
internal. Uh, industry specific, right? Internal or industry specific. Yeah. You know, a lot of them you're seeing it uh, more catered to like hotels or maybe perhaps construction. What's yeah, and companies, umbrella companies. I mean, a company right, yeah. would have a number of different businesses and kind of try to fill uh, each of their of their right. businesses with employees, right? But I haven't exactly. seen an island-wide job fair at, 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 like the one that's happening Friday. Right, exactly. And so, you know, uh, we so we announced this, I think it was just uh, sometime last week, right? And at the time that we announced it, we had uh, just a little over 60 employers signed up. Uh, since we announced it, I mean, the interest that we've gained since then, now we have close to 90 employers. Wow. Can you fit uh, them are, all there? Uh, well, we, we, we are trying our best. Uh, we Right now, we have close to 90. Uh, we have space for all of them, uh, but we have also have a waiting list. So um, we have, I mean, the, the we, it, it runs the gamut. You know, right. we have the service industry, obviously, because, I mean, the service industry, that's our number one um, market, right? Mm -hmm. We have construction, there's ship repair, there's finance, we have uh, hotel and lodging, health care. Uh, we DOE is going to be there, Guam Department of Education. Yeah, because they got to fill um, the teachers, uh, the teacher right. positions up by the time school starts, right? Right, okay. right, back to school. We have military recruiters, uh, the U.S. Armed Forces. Mm. They're going to be there. So, you know, maybe you're not interested in uh, a job here in Guam. Maybe you want to go and um, look at your options uh, in the military service, in the uniform services. Sure. So they're going to be there, too, recruiters. You know, that, sure. that's another option for you to explore your career as well. Because it, it really is. It all comes back to how people can, can provide for themselves, provide for their families. You obviously need to do this do that with the job because there is no more poor right right and there's no more poor but also you know we were hit with a, a pandemic pretty hard mm. uh so you know people lost their jobs uh and it's not just about losing your job but there were people who were lost hours uh, there are people who were maybe perhaps continue to work but didn't have enough hours um so this is not only for those who may have lost their jobs but for people who didn't uh, have enough hours and maybe want to add uh, more hours to regain you know, some their, income that was lost right. or have a second income. Maybe mm -hmm. they're struggling um, for, for single parents. Maybe they need a second income or or, or a part time job. They're looking mm -hmm. for a part time job to supplement that income. So this is for, for anyone and everyone. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just and, and it's all uh, types of uh, at any level, any skill level you may have. So, so we're even talking about entry level stuff. Entry level right. all the way up to, you know, management level, maybe even a, C, a potential CEO could be there. Wow. So, yeah. and you know, the one thing that I love about this job mm. fair too, uh, Polly, if I may, you know, when I was younger, you know, uh, maybe in, in, in my past uh, life. Like not five years life. ago? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, you know, maybe when I was uh, 10, 15 years ago, right? Uh, you know, I hear about all these job fairs and, and, and sometimes they're, they, they can be a little daunting, a little mm. intimidating, right? Um, because there's all these employers and and, and, and you kind of go there and you think, oh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get a job on the spot or, you know, I, I, I'd i rather just maybe, um, you know, maybe just uh, inquire at, at another time, right? But the one thing that I love about... Um, you know, this job there is that maybe you're unsure about your, your career path. Maybe you're unsure about uh, what industry or what uh, particular um, path you want to go in in your life, right? You don't know where you're at in your career growth or your career development. You've had different types of jobs in, in your life. Maybe you've had like five different jobs. Um, what, the one thing that we're going to have at this job fair is we're going to have a mini AJC. So this is like a mini uh, American Job Center. So we're going to have hiring managers. We're going to have uh, technical uh, providers there on site. And so you're, you're going to walk in. You're going to see all these uh, almost 90 employers on site. It's going to be a little uh, it's going to be a little much. Right. But it we're almost sounds like a forum. Like a, like yeah, an, yeah, it almost a, sounds like a forum. Like exactly. A, With all these tables yeah, an employer's everywhere, forum, you know, and, or a summit. Yeah, right. Almost like a summit. And, and you know, there's, there's going to be people asking you, hey, you know, fill out an application. Here's uh, information about our, our uh, company. You know, and you might be a little confused. Well, maybe you want to skip that. 
you know, because it's a little intimidating, we're going to have a mini AJC there and we're going to have uh, counselors who can talk to you and guide you. So they can help you apply. They can help right. you build your resume. They can tell you, you know what, you have skills here. What is your experience there? Let's sit down and help guide you. So that's something I might might have been useful for me, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Now, you know, I'm 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 grateful I have a job. I'm grateful that I'm here. So, uh, you know, I'm comfortable where I'm at. But for someone, sure. you know, maybe 10 for me, 10, 15 years ago, that might have been very useful for me. Um, and I would have liked to have that type of assistance back then. So I, I encourage people who may be a little bit uh, intimidated, who may not be, um, might might be discouraged about job fairs, you know, come check it out. You never know what you might get out of it. You for might sure, and definitely dress for success, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, maybe you're not ready to go and get a job now. Maybe you might be comfortable right now, but, you know, just come and check it out. Um, and some, you can talk to someone and then maybe, uh, you know, in the future, uh, when you are ready for a job, you already have some, some sort of guidance in mm. that path forward. Right, right. And you've also set the tone for anything that could be leading into the future. Right. But I wanted to talk, I guess we can close with uh, what should applicants bring? Because the worst thing that can happen is you, you showed up, but then you <laughs> forgot something that is right. necessary. So uh, let's set people up for success when they show up. Absolutely. Great question. You know, the one thing that uh, we're hearing from employers, especially those who are really hungry, is, you know, if, if they see an applicant who's eager and this person has it all, they're ready, right? They have a resume prepared, they come dressed, they look professional, and they've checkmarked all the boxes, they're ready to hire on the spot. So if you've got your resume, bring your resume. Um, if you have, you know, bring your ID, if you can bring your ID, come dress professionally, you know, I mean, wear a nice, you know, button down shirt for guys, you know, uh, wear nice dress shoes if you have any for girls, you know, uh, wear nice, uh, if, you, if you have a, a nice, um, nice blouse, you know, yeah. a nice it's skirt. It's Guam or, too, so it could yeah, be island formal. Sure, island yeah. formal. Yeah. Uh, you know, something like that. Church, yeah. church, uh, Sunday best. Yeah, you something won't like go that. wrong if you show up in your Absolutely. Sunday's best. I also, yeah. I guess I'll um, just bring up one more thing, and it's basically um, like a cheat sheet for me that has always worked because the worst thing I've seen it where somebody will pick up their phone and be like, hey, mom, what's my address? <laughs> what's my phone number? <laughs> Kind of have a cheat sheet or just look at your resume if you forgot your address or your phone number, right? Especially if you're doing that in front of uh, in front an of employer. The, right. Like, oh, employer. this person doesn't even know their address. I wonder what else they don't know. Yeah. 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 Come prepare. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you have your diploma with you already, I mean, bring it with you. You know, your, your certificates, any of those. Yeah. If you're, say you're applying for a construction job and, and you have all your certificates with you, bring those. Come Perfect. prepare. Yeah, bring all of those with you if you have it. If you have your, if you're applying for, say, like a restaurant job and you have your, uh, forgot what they're called, like serve. Oh yeah, they're safe. Your certifications, safe. Yeah. ABC license, all of that. ABC license. Yeah. Bring those yeah. with you if you have it already. Bring yeah. it with you. Yeah, all right. Compare. Yeah, and so uh, again, it's this Friday. It's all day, right? 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Got it. Yep. And if anybody wants to know more, uh, even after the job fair, because that's what you guys do. You guys help assist people get, you know, get a job and whatnot, even after the island wide job yes. fair. So can you give us some uh, some some contact information uh, with the American Job Center? Yes, yes. So give us a call. Uh, the American Job Center. The phone number there is six seven one four seven five. 7,000 or 7,001. So even after this job fair is done, you know, you can always uh, walk into the AJC, the American Job Center, or give us a call and we'll help you with your job search anytime. Um, our, our website, uh, right now it's down, but uh, we're, because we're working on some maintenance with our website, but the website is hireguam.com. You can also visit our Facebook page. Uh, Facebook is a uh, Guam Department of Labor, obviously, we have our Instagram account, but you know, anytime, 
walk in to the American Job Center with the GCIC building. Um, we're on the, I believe it's a third floor. So uh, anytime, just give us a call, 475-7000 or 7001. Thanks again for the help, Janella. It's always fun talking with you. You too, Polly. It's such a pleasure, and I really thank you for this opportunity. Okay. Adios. The rising cost of living is affecting all of us on Guam. Our administration has expanded a program. We want to pay for your child's daycare up to $675 a month per child. This means more money in your pocket to pay for other expenses like the cost of gas and groceries. The Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration is investing in Guam's future and that starts by supporting our working families. We are all in this together, Guam. This ad is paid for by government funds at the Office of the Governor and the Department Department of Public Health and Social Services. Four years ago, we said we would make public safety a priority, and we did. We believe that law enforcement officers are important, and we gave them a pay raise because we value their sacrifices to keep us safe. We said we would ensure there are more police officers in our villages, and we delivered. We promised to provide them new vehicles and the tools they need to protect you. And we have. We assured you we would promote community policing and we are working with neighborhood watch programs in the villages. We pledge to expand drug treatment services to help people become productive members of society. And so we opened a detox unit and are expanding capacity. Four years ago, we made these commitments and we delivered. Let's continue our progress. We are all in this together. This is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and I approve this message. Once again, I'm Alana Chargaloff, and here is your COVID recovery report. According to the Joint Information Center, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized emergency use of the Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines for individuals ages six months and older. Vaccines are available at Public Health's Northern Community Health Center in Dededo and Southern Community Health Center in Inalahan. Requirements for minors to receive the Moderna or Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine are a parent or legal guardian must provide both a minor's birth certificate and a government-issued photo identification, and a minor must be accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. Guardians must also present legal guardianship or power of attorney documents. For more information on COVID-19 vaccination dosage guidelines, visit dphss.guam.gov or Guam recovery.com. For inquiries, contact 311 through a local number. That's all for now. This has been your COVID recovery report on Buenos in the morning. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Have a bright and beautiful Thursday. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Department of Public Health and Social Services Division of Children's Welfare Bureau of Child Services, Committee to Re-elect Lou and Josh, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety.